A number of years ago, I found this little TV VCR, VCP combo sitting at the side of the road. It was in sad shape. And I just kind of put it over in the corner in the uh, storage unit, and it's just been sitting there ever since. I figured, you know what, I'm going to look at this thing, see if I can get it going, see what it needs, and uh, that way I can just get rid of it, because it, it doesn't, I don't need it, I don't want it, and I know someone will want a CRT TV with a video player, so let's check it out and see what I've got. This time I've got one of these little Emerson combination, I think this is just a player, I'm pretty sure this is just a playback machine, uh, video cassette player, so it does not record, and little TV. It has an auto repeat feature on this. These were popular back in the day for trade shows. Someone would just have the product demo on auto repeat. And uh, this one apparently doesn't work. Well, the volume control's got a problem for starters. That needs to be cleaned. See if it will play and it does not play okay this one should be uh, I think one that uh, we can save let's get started this uh, units from 1988 August 88 gonna pull the screws out from the back and pull the back cover off of it when I say screws, I mean two screws, because that's all that's holding it together. This thing's in pretty sad shape. Uh, the power cord's been damaged as well, but hey, I found it at the side of the road, so uh, what do you expect, right? Half the screws are missing. <laughs> Has it got two screws holding it together? Looks like it's only got two screws holding this thing together. This thing looks like it's been through a war. Whoa, made in Japan, probably by Orion. Hey, when the back is stuck, use a bigger hammer. This thing really should be going straight to recycling. Board's been repaired before. Yikes. Um, couple screws should pull out the, the video deck. The whole the whole thing slides out uh, one screw because that's all there is in here is one screw. I don't even know why I'm bothering with this thing. This, this should be going straight to recycling. hated these things always just a pain in the ass to work on all right okay there's the uh, there's the mechanism but the volume controls here I'm gonna give this a shot of cleaner and see whether that will fix that noise problem get the volume control working I don't know what's wrong with the, the uh, VCR it could just be the heads are dirty it could be something more serious uh, but we'll deal with the volume control first just give this a shot of neutral use sparingly as this is the stuff that's got the good stuff in it by good stuff I mean can you read the ingredients this stuff was actually designed for the telephone industry and it was referred to as switchman in a can it's uh, pretty nasty stuff it can cause cancer and the whole bit the good stuff you can't buy this anymore this can is very, very old. I've had it forever. And I, I want it to last because the stuff you get today is is nothing like that. I used to have two cans, I'm down to one. This is the last can I've got. Okay, I'll plug the speaker back in and uh, see whether that fix that problem with the noise. And then uh, we can deal with the uh, the VCR portion if that fixes this. Great. Gotta turn it around and push this in close enough to get to it. To the plug that is. 
As they say they're always hard to work on. Okay, that's got that part taken care of. Now, we'll turn it around again so I can get to the VCR portion. I gotta pull this cover off, which means the, the circuit board and everything comes off with it. It's just, they are a real, as I say, a real pain in the ass. We used to hate these things. People would buy these things to play stupid kids movies on, put one of these things in a kid's room, right? Just because, oh, it's all, it's all in one heads would clog up and they'd, they'd bring them in for cleaning and they'd wonder why it was like $65 to clean the heads. And couldn't understand why it would charge so much. A bunch of crooks. We'd drag them in the back and say, want to see how much work it is to take this thing apart? To clean the stupid heads? It's just a joke. And anything else you need to do to them. Alright. That's two screws out that hold the cover on it. It should... Uh, Should lift off or slide back. Nope. Oh, I hate these things. I forgot. The board's got to come out, as does the transformer, because there are more screws under there. And another cover. Yikes. I forgot how bad. That's why I've been sitting on this thing all these years. I just didn't want to touch it. You got to take the stupid power transformer out on this thing as well to get. Oh, it's just a joke. I think you got to pull the power transformer out. You got to pull the board out. I know that to get. The, you got to get the board off the top of the chassis so that you can remove the cover. Pretty sure that was what I had to do. Yeah, it's been so long since I've worked on one of these things. It's like, why? board is loose now, and now the cover can slide back, I think. What else is holding it up here? I'm sure there's something else that's holding it. No joke. Yeah, one more screw underneath the board here. This has got to come out too, if I'm not mistaken. And then you can lift the transformer out of the way. And then the cover can lift off. Oh man. I think it's got to come out too, I think. What a joke. Gotta lift off that strap so I can lift the board out of the way so I can lift the top cover away. Lift the board out so I can lift the top cover away so I can get to yet another cover underneath this one. It has to come off to access the bloody heads to clean them. You can't test it with it apart because, well, it's nothing's connected. You got to get under this one too. Got to get out of this cover. That's right. That's right. The old stuff was built so much better than the newer stuff. Geez, I just love this stuff. Wow! And if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. I'm gonna clean the heads, and if that doesn't fix it, this thing's gonna go scrappy. Pretty dirty. Now I gotta reassemble to test the stupid thing. Much is being cut out because I'm cursing this this piece of junk. It's like why? Why did it have to be made like this? I 
I think at one point there was a lot more screws in it too. And in prior servicing over the years, the techs just got fed up and left half the screws out. I don't know which screws go where on here. I know there's one screw hole just to Now this was not a local unit. I found this in a back alley about 10 years ago I'm in Burnaby. The board back on now. Oh, I gotta put the power transformer in first. Our transformer goes in like uh, this. It slots in there and bolts down in two places. Goes in there like that. And then there's a screw that holds this in place. There's two screws actually to hold the transformer in. goes in over here, I don't even know why I'm bothering, but this thing's going right together now. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's uh, really, really a, a ridiculous design. Okay, that goes, the board sits in like that, and then there's a couple of screws that have to hold the board in place. Or the hell they were. Oh, there was one up front here. Now the reason for all that shielding, of course, is to block interference from that flyback transformer, because that would right cause there. interference to the picture. One that holds the board in place there. And then there's a couple connectors that have to go on. Take power down to the, the circuit. And there's another connector on the back here that takes power to the VCR circuit. Then I gotta plug this stupid uh, multi connector back in. And try not to bend the wires while I'm doing it. I not even put a stupid plug on this thing. Piece of crap. It was shit like this that made me really want to get out of the business. And then I had to listen to people bitch and complain about how much it cost to clean the heads. Because they went and bought a useless piece of junk like this piece of crap. And I gotta put this bracket back on now. This holds up the, I don't know, this holds up the flyback transformer, I believe. And that goes on like that. And that screws into the flyback transformer up here. It's like, really? Really? They had. They had to build it like this? Are you on drugs? Oh man, Jesus Christ. It goes in like that. And then this goes up to the. Oh man. My screw that goes in down here and holds this in place. This has got to go on just so I can test it. That goes on there like that. That supports the board at the back. There was another screw at the back here somewhere. That held this board in. Where the hell was it? Okay, I think I got the board in place. And everything is plugged back in and needs to be plugged in for testing. Turn it on, plug it in, and uh, fingers crossed, I'll get a picture. Who knows? At least the belt's not broken on it. Do I get a picture? I won't get any sound because I got a picture. Excellent. All right, uh, I got a picture. That's better than nothing. The tracking's okay, I guess. Chroma phase, color level, brightness, contrast. I guess that looks okay. Now time to hook up the speaker and put this piece of crap back together. Well, let's see if all the other modes work. Let's try fast forward. That works. Let's try rewind. Hey, it rewinds. Let's uh, try eject. Well, I know that works because I got the tape out of it before. So I guess the idler... 
He's got an idler in it. I guess the idler and belts are okay, which is good because I wasn't going to fix them if they weren't. There's a preset tuning. I don't even need to bother hooking up the tuning on this thing, or the antenna anymore because there is nothing to, to, to see. It's, this is basically just a tape player, although it does have AV input, so you know someone could use this to play video games on, I guess, or whatever. Um, but um, no, no off-air reception. Obviously, it's been shut down for you know 15 years. All right, now to put the um, mechanism back in, it's the reverse of removing it, which was a pain in the ass, and putting it back together is no better. This thing draws 90 watts too, so it's not exactly a, a, a power miser. And it's quite heavy, because it's got all this metal in it, you see. I'll plug the speaker in. Slide the chassis. I'm going to hook up the degaussing coil as well, which is over here. It plugs in at the back. It's got a manual degaussing button on this thing. That should just slide in like that, and I know it's not all the way in yet. I just gotta work at that to get this in properly. All right, I got this piece of junk back together, and of course my TV button's not lining up. But TV power button's not lining up. What else? I had to cut some more because it took me another 10 minutes of fiddle farting around to get that stupid button to go through to turn the power on and off. It's a joke. And now, what's going on now? It doesn't want to play? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, wait a minute. TV wasn't on. <laughs> Might help. Might help if the TV's turned on. There, it's playing. Oh, it hums. So we have power supply problem as well. Wonderful. Maybe it's just no, not... Well, I can hear it, but... gauzing button on the back here somewhere. Right, there it is. It plays. Yep, it's got AC hum. You can see it humbar. Probably the big filter on the on the TV part of things. Is it this big filter? It might be this big filter right here. The big filter on the back here. Yeah, it's on the VCR side of things, not the TV because you can see and you can hear it on the other screen. It has an, it has an uh, AV output on it as well. And the VCR has its own power supply on the bottom. Whoops, wrong button. See, this is an AC-DC TV, so this power supply that's on the side is um, is a DC supply for the TV. Okay, so I've got a good clear picture. When I turn on the TV, you notice what's happening? As soon as I turn on the TV, it's this is running off of DC. Uh, the, this is the power supply here. The, everything runs off of DC on this unit. If we look at the meter, in DC volts, you'll see that I have 17 volts. I turn on the TV, I get the hum bars, and it's dropping to 15. And I got the, the hum bars on the TV picture. What happens if I just take my my external power supply and just parallel it on? I've got my power supply set for 17 volts. Problem goes away. 
I can unplug the AC power. I'm now powering this up directly from my DC power supply. It's drawing 3.6 amps. Right, I'm powering it up from this one. The long lead power supply that somebody just recently made a comment that my review seven years ago doesn't doesn't mean anything because I only tested it for 10 minutes and that it's a piece of junk power supply but I've been using it six years and abusing it and I haven't blown it up yet. So that filter cap is bad. So we can bridge another one on there and see if I can bring this. I don't, I'm not going to have a, a, a 10,000 microfarad cap at 25 volts but I might have a, I might have a, a 3300 or something I can bridge on there and try to bring this up a bit better. But I'll plug the other, I'll plug the TV back in and we'll remove, if you can see the picture on here, and I'll remove that. You see the color? And now it goes away. And if you look on the plasma, you can see it on the plasma as well. When I do that. Just getting some AC ripple in. If I unplug the AC power supply completely, the uh, ripple completely goes away. You can see a bit of it there. But when I remove my power supply, you got a lot. If I turn off the, see I noticed that when I turned off the TV, if I'm looking at it on my plasma, in the background, if I turn off the TV, it uh, goes away because the VCR is not drawing as much current as the CRT. I'll just bridge a, uh, this is a 3300. Let me spark a bit. Now I cleared it up for the most part. I'll have to see if I can find a, a bigger cap. That makes it almost perfect. I'll have to look at an old, maybe an old amplifier or something and try to drag out a big one because I, I have nothing, I have nothing that size. The biggest I've got is a 3300. I'll have to find one. It's a 10,000 it uh, is going open. This might be the problem here. Uh, there is a separate power supply on that VCR that um, powers it up separately with its own 120 volt source but there's no power there and I just found there's a little crack here. It looks like it's been repaired before but it's not uh, it's not putting power through so I'm just going to bridge over this little damage section of this board here and um, see whether it'll work because maybe it, the VCR is just drawing excessive power from the TV side of things to so say this is uh, this is an AC DC set so it can operate from a 12 volt supply as well and there's a switch back here to switch between AC and DC I just put that bridge back in fix that fix that uh, section of board so that the VCR will get power from its own power supply as opposed to sucking everything back from the TV. Let's see now. Do I have 120 volts here? Which I do. I had zero there before. And you guys couldn't see that, but that there was a crack there right here that had been bridged over, but it had gone open again. Let's see now whether um, it works better. Yeah, that's how it's looking now. I think it's looking a little better than before. Anyway, I'm not going to do anything more to this. It's uh, it's working as well as uh, I think it's ever going to work. And I'm selling it off, so I'm not getting a lot of money for it. So control. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. That's as good as it's going to get. It's it's playing. It's the TV portion works on it, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.